recovering as well as I should, I'm gonna increase my protein. If I feel I'm going to do my runs or go to do my workouts and I don't feel like I have enough energy, I may increase Exercise. my good carbohydrates, okay? I'm always checking my balance. Another important part to remember, in addition to how you feel, because sometimes our feelings, <laughs> I'm not gonna get into my life coaching now, but sometimes our feelings can mislead us, okay? So we can save that for another conversation <laughs> another time. But sometimes our feelings can mislead us, meaning that Yo, what up and welcome to the Gym Life Podcast. You are rocking out with Jima. Today we are gonna to be talking about mastering your balance. One of the most important things you could do in fitness. We're gonna start off with our warm up because of course you're gonna work out with me today. So with our warm up, each exercise is gonna be one minute each. We're gonna start off with standing adductor stretch. That's where we shift our weight from side to side. You wanna feel the stretch on the inside thigh. Now, I wanna start by saying I have been a certified personal trainer through the National Academy of Sports Medicine for about 12 years now. I've had my own private fitness studio for going over seven years now. In addition to that, I have a certification in holistic health, focus on nutrition and life coaching. When somebody asks me how much protein should I have, how, many car how much carbohydrate should I have, how much water should I drink, my response is always, I don't know, let's find out. With all the clients that I've worked with, with all the certifications I've had, with all the research I've done, everybody is different. Your job is to master your balance, not what any study says. Now, and we'll get standing quad stretch next. Now, that's not to say that studies don't have any insight or information or any good, uh, what I call base points, right? Foundational points, places to start. Meaning that if you read um, women over age 25 should have around 25 to 30 grams of protein per meal. I'm just throwing out random numbers, okay? And you're like, okay, you know what? Let me try that. And it actually works for you? Then okay, that makes sense. Then you want to go with that. But you don't ever want to blindly go with something. I was recently talking to a client of mine and his girlfriend is dealing with some gut issues. And she has been doing her research, and she's super on it. I have, to add, I have to add that in addition to it, as far as working out, as far as doing her research on what she should eat, like on it, all right? Um, next, we're gonna do standing deadlift. So we reach down, feel the stretch in the hamstrings, then we reach up. So she's on it as far as doing her research, insanely active, works out probably five to six days a week, and been dealing with some gut issues. Now, she had read an article in I can't remember exactly where the article was from, but knowing her, if it was, it was well referenced, okay? So she's reading an article, and the article says that women at her age should be having this amount of protein. It just wasn't agreeing with her. Now, that's the point where I say you have to learn to master your balance. That's the thing, master your balance. Meaning that even though it says you should have this amount of protein, whether it's 80, 90, 100 grams of protein a day, if it does not agree with you, then you just don't do it because they don't have those those studies don't have the time or the energy to go after an interview and do their research on everybody. So they're very broad strokes. OK. All right. Next, we're going to go squats. Well, warming those legs up. Then I'll go over the circuit what we got for today. So she went to go see a gut specialist and the gut specialist after doing endless tests, endless research on her specifically, getting her feedback, gave her a different recommendation. So all that goes to say is when you hear those commercials or see those podcasts or see any of those research or data points, just remember, it's just a starting point. It's not law. So if you're not feeling well, you don't push through it. Now, even when I'm dealing with myself and my workouts, my, I change. So not only are you going to find a space where things work for you, understand it's going to change. So don't even be a slave to what worked for you before. Okay, I hope, you, I hope this is all just staying with you. 
You don't want to be a slave to research that includes your demographic, and you don't want to be a slave to even what's worked for you before. The key is always constantly, always constantly testing. Then we're going to do flies. This is a good one if you sit at your desk all day to open up your chest, right? I like to focus on what I call the four pillars, okay? This is where I need you to focus the most and then focus even more as we start breaking down the four pillars. First, we have exercise, and it can go in any order. Second, we have nutrition, what you're putting in your body. Third, we have stress. Fourth, we have sleep. Those are the, and you're going to hear me refer to these in different podcasts and different conversations, always talking about the four pillars, because that's where you have to do your research with yourself. You have to be the uh, professional with your body, and you have to be the one who's being experimented on, right? So you have exercise, nutrition, stress, and sleep. Let's start with exercise, what we're doing here today. And... Good. Exercise. All right. So for the circuit, each one is going to be 10 reps. We're going to, I got two 20 pound dumbbells. You can grab whatever you want. I'm keeping it super light. We're going to do 10 curls, 10 shoulder presses, 10 push ups, 10 squats, and then 10 lunges. All right. So 10 curls, 10 shoulder presses, 10 push ups, 10 squats, 10 lunges. Super simple. All right. So 10, 9, Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. When I have my guests, I make sure that they, I try to design a workout that they can keep up with. Or if I like to push them a little, then I make it a little tougher. Two and one. Okay, exercise. Exercise can be broken down for the sake of this conversation into two components. Cardio and resistance training. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Cardio and resistance training. Cardio is any repetitive movement that you do for an extended period of time. That could be jumping jacks, running, jogging. Notice all of those exercises have a pace and a rhythm to it. I'm doing my squats with my dumbbells up here. They have a pace and a rhythm to it when you're doing cardio, right? So when you're jogging, you're pretty much keeping a set pace and you're going for an extended period of time, biking, swimming, hiking, all of those things, all can be considered cardio for exercise. Two more. And one. Resistance training is anything where resistance is applied. I just did push-ups. that was my body weight, that was the resistance. These dumbbells, the resistance is in my hands. Pull-ups, the resistance is your body weight, okay? So cardio is any repetitive movement that you do for an extended period of time, and resistance training is anything where resistance is applied to your exercise. Those are usually shorter, those usually get your heart rate up quicker. Cardio, especially when we're talking about moderate, moderate cardio, is a little bit more of a steady pace, right? And one, exercise, nutrition, stress, sleep. Exercise, cardio, strength training. I have seen so many podcasts, informative articles, all those things saying, uh, strength training is the way to go. Cardio is the way to go. How do they know? How do they know? What if you can't do cardio? What if you can't do strength training? What if you have injuries? What if you don't have a trainer? All these things are never taken into consideration in these studies. That's why it's up to you with those four pillars to master your balance. I'm going to tell you what cardio is good for, what resistance training is good for, also what I do, and then it's for you to kind of incorporate and figure it out yourself. For me, I love a balance. And I like a strict balance, right? And now, when we talk about balance, that, it doesn't mean like if there's six days that you work out, you do three days strength training, three days cardio. Your balance could be four days strength training, two days cardio. Or your balance could be five days cardio, one day strength training. Does this make sense? So I didn't, you have to find what, your, what yours is and then master it. For me, 
I do like a, a four to two. And certainly that changes. But right now, let's say for the sake of this conversation, I'm at a four to two. That's four days of cardio for me, two days of strength training. But that's because I really want to build my endurance. That's my focus right now. My focus is building my endurance. Some of the benefits of cardio are increased cardiovascular strength, of course. Um, it also helps with your heart rate. That's what's huge. Hypes to fight off toxins, builds your immune system. I also just recently read an article, article that cardio helps with bloating and water retention. Okay, these are some of the things that cardio is great for. It's great for weight loss, really good for weight loss, especially moderate cardio. I'm not talking about sprints or you killing yourself running up and down hills super hard, right? So moderate cardio where your heart rate is about, <clears throat> let's say, 60 to 75. I'm going to say about 60 percent of your capacity, right? So when we're at moderate cardio, some of the benefits, I'll say that again, are increased cardiovascular strength, improve heart rate, um, decrease in uh, decrease in, pardon me, increase in immunity, where it helps to fight off toxins, helps to fight off diseases. All these things are very important. I also just read that it helps Exercise. out with water retention, bloating. That's one of the things that it's great for. Also great for weight loss. I know for me specifically, when I'm a consistent jogging, I drop weight really, really quickly. A good thing to look at is always look at the professional in whatever exercise you're focusing on. So if we're talking about running, then you kind of look at what marathon runners look like, right? Marathon runners are super skinny, right? So that's them and they're doing moderate pace cardio. For us, it's like death, but for them, that's their moderate pace, right? So then when we're talking about resistance training, great for building muscle, huge, great for bu building muscle also helps you to kind of decrease fat. So building muscle helps you to decre decrease fat, decreases inju injury. That's one of the biggest things we don't talk about. We're gonna go back to the next circuit. It decreases injury, because now if you're stronger, if you feel good, always in, include stretching in this as well. If you're stronger, if you feel good, chances are those little aches and pains when you get out the car, if you're lifting properly, aren't going to be there. You're not going to trip and fall and sprain your ankle because now you've improved your stability. You've improved your core strength, right? So now if you have two separate, two separate modes that you can address or attack or incorporate into your day, and each one has different benefits, wouldn't it make sense to utilize each? Wouldn't it make sense to utilize each? Different times may call for different utilizations. One week, I may, or even one part, let's say one month, I want to do more cardio. Another month, I want to do more resistance training. Speaking of which, let's get back to the circuit. 10 curls. Six, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Your job is to test out each slowly. Don't look for those quick fixes. I heard this really, really interesting quote that I've, I absolutely love. It says, the quickest way to get somewhere is slowly. We're all looking for this quick fix. Like, oh, if I just do this, then I'll be done and everything will be cool, blah, 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 blah. I eat this much protein. No, 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 it's not the way it works. You're gonna need to take time to figure out your body. But trust me, when you figure out what works for your body, you will be able to get results insanely fast. Like insanely fast. That's why you just take the time to figure it out. So you have exercise, you have cardio training, you have resistance training. Each one has its benefits. Try always to me. I think it's good to start off with a three to three. If you want to work out three days, or pardon me, even numbers, two to two, two days of strength training, two days of cardio, three days of strength training, three days of cardio, one to one, whatever your fitness level is. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Whatever your fitness level is, right? Now, once you start working with that, start making adjustments. If you see that you're not feeling strong enough, you want to start manipulating those days, manipulate those days. Next, when we're talking about nutrition, you have carbohydrates, you have protein, you have fats, and you have vegetables. Let's take vegetables off the table. Eat as much of those as often as you can. That's it. As much of it as you can, as often as you can. Spinach, kale, carrots, broccoli, whatever it is. Eat as much. Eat as much of it as you can, as often as you can. Put that off to the side. Carbohydrates, protein, fats, they all have a different purpose. They all have a different purpose. And 
often, and I'm not going to get into the different documentaries that I've seen where it's like, oh, you need to go 100% vegan or vegetarian, or you need to go to the paleo, like stop, 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 stop. Don't any of them care about you, period. Don't any of them care about whether you see results? Let's get this 100% clear. Anybody who has done those documentaries, anybody who has taken the time to uh, emphasize a particular way of life and say that there's no other way to do it, they do not care whether or not you see results, period, period. Your job is to care for yourself. So what do you do? I would still listen to them. Go, pick out what the benefits of those are. Whatever you hear, go look at the opposite. Pick out the benefits of what that is and then kind of form what your thing is, right? So now, carbohydrates, protein, and we have an extended podcast on this with me and soap. We really dig into it. But you have carbohydrates, protein, fats. Carbohydrates end up transforming into glucose. I don't want to get too much into this. I want to keep it simple for you. And your body loves it and hates it at the same time. Meaning your body, it's the first place your body goes for energy is when you intake carbohydrates. But then it's also the first place that it wants to get, it wants, first thing it wants to get rid of. It wants to get that blood, it wants to get that sugar out of your body, right? Next you have protein. Protein is great for recovery, building muscle, right? I've worked with plenty of vegans over time and our difficulty is getting enough protein, which they usually have to go to supplements, okay? And the only place you can get a complete protein, which is different from an incomplete protein, is when you get those from animal products. That's non-disputable. The only place you can get a complete protein by itself is from an animal product. Is, is that me telling you you need to go have all animal products to get? No, no. You can also get that by mixing certain grains, certain, um, certain beans, certain vegetables, and you can get your complete protein there. But one source for the animal products, a combination of sources for vegans, which I always, and I'll go back to saying, whatever works for you, okay? Now, next one is fats. Fats are great for helping nutrient absorption from all those vegetables that you've been eating, right? I know you all been eating your vegetables. Fat is great to aid in nutrient absorption. It's great for skin. We all have a certain amount of fat around our organs to help protect our organs. It's also great, all right, nutrient absorption, help for skin, nails, hair, all those things. All these things are important for fat. So you have protein, fat, carbohydrates. Start off, what do you think I'm going to say? One third, one third, one third. Okay, start off every plate, one third protein, one third carbohydrates, one third fat, and then pile on your fruits and vegetables. Okay, now as you go through, if you feel like you've had too much protein, now you start to adjust. Yours may be, okay, I need to have more protein on my plate, I need to have more carbohydrates on my plate, more um, fats, whatever it is, but then now you're gonna kind of play around with that. I'm gonna give you. Now, it's so funny, working with so many clients, I can almost hear them, well, what, what protein to eat? What? I know, okay. So I'll give you a list of some of my favorite carbohydrates, some of my favorite proteins, some of my favorite fats. Girls, my favorite proteins, salmon. I love salmon because it has the omega-3s, it has a lot of other vitamins and minerals <clears throat> other than just getting you the protein. Ten. So I love salmon. I love other kinds of fishes as well. Um, but then I'm not really a fan of chicken. I'm either going salmon or I'm going to go for a nice organic farm to table raised beef or steak. OK, those are my two that I like for protein. After that, for my carbohydrates, I like low glycemic carbohydrates. So I'm going to stick with sweet potatoes. Um, brown rice, sweet potatoes, brown rice. Those are two of my, I'll eat those every day. Sweet potatoes and brown rice, two of my favorites, okay? So you have fish, organic farm to table raised beef um, for protein, for carbohydrates, sweet potatoes, brown rice, even some um, multi-grain breads. Um, make sure there's not too much uh, ingredients in there. All right, so now, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight, nine, ten. For fats, avocados, coconut oil, cashews. Avocados, coconut oil, cashews. Those are my favorite when it comes to fats. Now let's look at a plate. One serving of salmon, one serving of brown rice, half an avocado, bunch of kale, bunch of spinach. That's a typical plate for me. I'll throw that together, afternoon, great. In the morning time, 
It may be an apple, um, cashews, apple, that's like my favorite go-to in the morning, apple, cashews, and some coconut yogurt. Maybe I may have some eggs in there somewhere as well, right? Um, squats and lunches. Um, so that's carbohydrates, proteins, fats. Those, those are kind of, those are my go-tos. That's what I love the most. And I, I like to keep it at one third, one third, one third. But also here's another way to master your balance. I have certain days where I'm super protein heavy. Wake up in the morning, eggs, maybe one apple, afternoon, fish, evening, steak, right? Then I, but I'm cognizant of that. I'm cognizant of that. So now what am I doing the next day? I'm trying to go a little bit more carb heavy. I'm constantly trying to meet that balance. So now if I feel like I'm a little sore, now remember we said proteins help recovery. If I feel like I'm a little bit sore after my strength training and I'm not recovering as well as I should, I'm gonna increase my protein. If I feel I'm going to do my runs or go to do my workouts and I don't feel like I have enough energy, I may increase Exercise. my good carbohydrates, okay? I'm always checking my balance. Another important part to remember, in addition to how you feel, because sometimes our feelings, <laughs> I'm not gonna get into my life coaching now, but sometimes our feelings can mislead us, okay? So we can save that for another conversation <laughs> another time. But sometimes our feelings can mislead us, meaning that we feel like, oh, these carbohydrates make me feel great, these proteins make me feel great. So I'm going to emphasize this emphatically. Get your blood work done. Get your blood work done. Even if you do it once a year, check. Where is your sugar levels? Where is your cholesterol? All these things are super important to know in combination with how you feel. And then now you know, all right, my cholesterol's high. Maybe I've had too many fried foods. Maybe I've had too much, too many of the animal products, right? My sugar's high. Maybe I'm having too many carbohydrates. You kind of see how this works? It's constantly checks and balances. So when you're mastering your balance, not only is it doing your research, and when I mean do your research, just whatever you hear, cool, from, it's from, as long as it's from a credible source. You get that information from a credible source. Now you go and you try it out. After you try it out, you also get your blood work done. Now you're eventually going to find your balance that if you come to a professional like me, now we're going on to next level shit because you've done your research and your homework. Nobody, I emphasize this. Let me sound my dad for a second. I emphasize this as so you hear me. Nobody cares about your body the way you do. So when they give you information, they did not take the time to consider each person one by one. I don't care how much they care about people. They didn't consider you, okay? Um, right back around. Next, stress. Exercise, nutrition, none of that matters if your stress isn't in check. You see what I'm talking about mastering your balance? None of that matters if your stress is not in check. We'll go in. So now we had exercise, we had cardio, we had strength training, resistance training. Then we went down to nutrition. We had carbs, proteins, fats. You learn what those things did. Vegetables, eat as much as you can, as often as you can. Now we're going to stress. You have the parasympathetic and the sympathetic nervous system, okay? The sympathetic nervous system is your fight or flight that is responsible for, <clears throat> that is responsible for when you're in danger. When you're in danger, your fight or flight kicks in. When your fight or flight kicks in, it starts to, Re, um, redirect the blood to your heart, get your heart rate pumping, adrenaline's going, keep you safe. Very important things. But also guess what it does? It starts to shut down digestion. When digestion isn't working, okay, now you're not breaking down food, utilizing the nutrients, sending them to the proper places in your body where they need for you to have energy, um, immunity, all those things, right? That's how I'm gonna fight or flight kicks in. The <clears throat> Sympathetic nervous system. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So, I ask you a question. If John works out super hard, gets up in the morning, bangs out crazy hard workouts, and he eats fruits and vegetables, 
gets the right amount of carbs, but he is constantly in a space of stress. He, his body is not even going to have the ability to break down the food, utilize the weight, or reap the benefits of that exercise. It's not going to say he's going to blow up and get fat. That all, you know, genetics come into play and all those things. But he's not going to be able to reap the benefits of exercise and nutrition if he doesn't have his stress in check. It's super, super, super important to know. Um, oh, man, now squats. I know I'm leaving you hanging on a good part. This is a good part for me, too. One, two, three, four. Do some squats. <laughs> Eight, nine, and ten. Then we got lunges. Right? So now if his stress isn't in check, he's not going to be able to reap the benefits of those things. Right? Now, the reason why the sympathetic nervous system is in place is because biologically we need it in order to keep ourselves safe. So when we were faced with danger, see a lion, I need this shit so I can run. Bang. Now, when we go to work cool down. and person A or X pisses us off, now our body responds like we're being chased by a lion, which is no good. It's no good. So now, if we're incorporating stress into the equation, our job is to be in a relaxed space as often as we can. There are so many demands in the world between work, between friendships, family, requirements. Um, now you're trying to get your exercise in check. Now, da, 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 da. You always remember, and let, let, me, let me digress for a second. All of us have a BMR, a base metabolic rate. That's how many calories we burn in a day. For, completely forget about exercise. You don't know if I work out or no. That's how many calories you burn a day. That means John, Jane, whoever it is, when you wake up in the morning, so when you wake up in the morning again, right, a full 24 hours, so you wake up in the morning, 8 a.m., go through your day, go to sleep, wake up, that 24-hour span, you burn a certain amount of calories per day. That's your base metabolic rate. You burn the most calories while you're sleeping during that time, okay? Now, if you add in exercise, running, strength training, resistance training, whatever, that helps so that you burn more calories when you're sleeping. But if you're not getting proper sleep, I'm kind of going in this. Let's put stress and sleep together, right? So I'm kind of getting into sleep. If you're stressed out or if you're not getting enough sleep, you may get some benefits from the exercise and nutrition, but you're not going to get as much as you could. You're not really going to maximize your health unless you're getting proper sleep where you're burning the most calories. Remember that. You burn the most calories when you're sleeping. Or if you're in a complete space of stress because your body is not able to repair itself from the workouts or your body is storing fat because it's all stressed out, it's not digesting the food and utilizing the way your body was designed to function. All these things are insanely important. Now, when we're talking about stress, we can't avoid it. We can't avoid stress. What I tell, and this is where I'm going to get into a little bit of my life coaching, what I try to tell my clients when we're talking about life coaching is... If you try to fight the stress, it's going to get bigger, it's going to impact you even more. But if you become familiar with the stress, you try to understand where that stress is coming from, look at that stress point as a place of curiosity rather than judgment. Oh, I'm stressed out, oh, I need to stop me. No, 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 I'm stressed out. Pause, take a step back. Why am I stressed out? What may have caused this? Do I have a legitimate reason to be stressed out? These are all things that are super important so that you can go and maximize your workouts and break down food. You, we get out of this all falls in line, mastering your balance, mastering your balance. Now, when it comes to sleep, I just want you to remember that sleep is where all the magic happens, where your body repairs itself, where your immune system starts to become stronger depending on how you put everything together during the day. That's when you start to burn the most calories, burn fat, everything, right? All these things happen when you sleep. So it's probably important to sleep a little bit. Only thing I would say with sleep is try to make sure you're not eating right before you go to sleep. Because, and maybe give it, I say, try to give it two hours. If that's not feasible, maybe an hour and a half. But if your body's so busy breaking down what you just gave it, whether it's a glass of wine, no, I'm not taking shots at anybody. You guys know I love you. All right. <laughs> Whether it's a glass of wine or it's, you know, a snack, whatever it is, 
Now your body's busy trying to break that down. You've now triggered an insulin response, whatever it is. Your body's not doing what it's um, most capable of and what it's designed for while you're sleeping. All right, so let's go through those things one more time. The four pillars, exercise, nutrition, stress, sleep. Start to use those. Play with them. Whatever little podcast you heard or whatever little excerpts you heard when your friend shares something. You need to eat 300 grams of protein per day. And, you know, listen to it. Take it into consideration. And I would say for the sake of this conversation, start off with equal amounts of each and then start adjusting from there.